Do you think Arturo Sandoval uses the trumpet to play music or music to play the trumpet? Music is first for me, you know. I can uh, get in that table there and play something and have fun. <laughs> Just with my hand on top of the table. You know what I mean? I do, yeah. Music is a, is, is a, a way of expression, is a vehicle to, to let our emotion get through, you know. And um, doesn't matter. I, I enjoy very much playing the piano, too. Yeah, you know, I want to talk about that. I have here a stack of some of your discs over the 42 years. You have a passion for the piano there, too? I do, indeed. Oh, yeah? Yes, I do. We got to we, we take care of it. Yeah, so where there? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Most recent. This is the last one. Yes. Passion for the piano. Get that cover because <laughs> I'm, I'm so proud of that cover. That's my youngest son did that cover. Absolutely. I yeah. saw that in the liner notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to ask you. I get the sense as I listen to all, I have all of your discs at home. These are only 11 here. But I get the sense that you're constantly evolving. You listen, every single Arturo Sandoval They're disc different. is different. different every animal. one of them. Sense God, that's my intention, you know. I don't want to do and redo and redo and redo the things in again because they're going to be so boring, you know. What guides you then in terms of the right questions to ask yourself before you go in the studio, Arturo. It's because every one of these, I mean, I, have my, I know I have my favorites yeah. of the discs, but still. Don't say it, don't say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Afterward, we'll talk about it. Okay, which okay, was okay, okay. But, but I, that's what I love about each one of your discs, always different. You're always you know, discovering a different way to approach the music. Unfortunately, not always you have the opportunity to put in the record exactly the, in the way you like, in, your, in the way you want. Sometimes the recording doesn't come out exactly in the way you dream, you know. And, um, and to be honest, I believe it's one of the first time, one of the first time I, I felt that kind of, uh, I, well, I get that kind of feeling, is with the, the new one, a tribute to the trumpet. Yeah. Everything came out even much better than I could dream before. Because I hear the region and say, oh my goodness, that is that going to be so difficult to match that. I'm going to suffer so much doing that. But, um, you know, it's something I don't know. It was like an extra energy drive me to do that record. And I'm... Um, it's your love. It's your passion. Yeah, you yeah, wanted yeah. to do this. And I never have, I never has had in my mind any kind of project, project for more than three or four months. This one is more than 15 years in my mind, you know. I want to do this, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and also it's a challenge, you know, because that, the preparation you need to do that exactly. is serious. Let's look in the rear view mirror now and go back to Cuba. The shaping. No, I don't want to go back. To <laughs> 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 Not even in imagination. <laughs> As a youth, the shaping influences. For you, they were what? That English is so deep for me. Can you refresh that and make it a little easier? When you were, when you were, when you were a youth in Cuba, you first put the instrument in your hands. Yeah. The influences, the music that you heard that help you as a catalyst to get you moving in, in this career? Actually, I think it was later on when I started to discover a lot more th different things than uh, strictly Cuban music. What you're talking about in the very beginning, that's what, what I was uh, only able to hear was a traditional kind of Cuban music. Especially in my home village where I grew up, it was a very, very poor community. Right outside of Havana? Oh, yeah. And um, I grew up in the middle of nowhere, in the countryside, you know. Very, very poor family. Very poor family. And, uh, and I hear just a couple of local musicians, um, you know, who, which play only that kind of uh, traditional Cuban music. And later on, I came to Havana for the first time when I was... Uh, 14 years old, to the National School of Art. And then I have to, I start to listen to different people, and I met the guy who played the, the, the first trumpet in the, in the National Symphony in Havana, and um, I start to get different ideas of the instrument. 
until some uh, friend of mine in in Ellis, what I think it was like mid sixties or early seventy probably. Late, I'm uh, sorry, late sisters. He played for me a record. He said, hey, you, you should listen to this. And then he played for me a record of Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker. That was the very first time I hear any jazz at all, ever. And I said, what's that? They said, that's a jazz. And that particular style is bebop. This is what they're playing. And that's Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker. I said, damn, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so deep and difficult. Those people are different musicians that, and I, I didn't know you can do those, those things with the trumpet. You know, when I had this the first time, I, I was like this for a week. You know. <laughs> but since God always, you know, that has been my philosophy. Every time I see something I admire or respect, or something I didn't know about, it's something I say, wow, that's good. That for me is nothing else than an inspiration to go home and practice. Some people say, hey, when I hear you play, I, I want to have my own day and I don't want to play anymore. That's, that's the wrong approach. That's stupid. When you hear someone you impress you or, or someone you really do things you don't even can dream to do it, you know what you have to do? Practice more. <laughs> And, and what did music mean to you growing up? I mean, you know, what made you say, play, we, perform? Music has been all my life my salvation, especially when I was a kid, when I was so poor and attending music. And I strongly believe that God sent the music to me and said, hey, you, little farmer, <laughs> I'm going to send you the music. That's going to be your vehicle to save yourself and, and help your family as yes. well. Yes. And you're going to be so, you know, if you take this seriously, you're going to do something with that. And when was the step between dreaming of coming here uh, and playing your music and reality? Yes. To coming to America? Yes. Oh, that was a very difficult uh, process because um, I want to come here a long time before, long time before. But I have been married for 29 years almost, you know. My younger son is... 28 years. My younger son is going to be 27 pretty soon. Which is me and I, don't, I, 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 I won't go to anywhere without my family. And the government knew that in Cuba, you know. They send you some places. I was traveling for many, many years before I came to America to live there for, for good. But um, I always was thinking about, I got my family home. I, can't, I, I have to come back. I cannot leave them alone, you know. And that was the kind of things that would hold me there for so long. And to be honest, I believe in 1990, the Cuban government made a mistake. That was the kind of mistake I was waiting for so long, you know. I asked for a special permission to my wife and younger son to join me during one of those tours in Europe. Actually, I was with Dizzy Gillespie in Europe. And um, they make a mistake and they let them go for, for one month to Europe. As soon as they get, they get in Europe, that was it. That was the moment I was waiting for so Close many the door. years. <laughs> Close the and door. then I talked to Dizzy, I said this, my family are here, I don't gonna come back to Cuba. He said, What? Yeah, I don't gonna come back. And then he brought me to the American Embassy, actually for political asylum, the whole process. Mm -hmm. I don't gonna give you more detail because I would like you to see the movie. You know, the I've movie. seen the movie, oh yeah, I've seen the you movie. Said, no, but I'm talking about the people. Yeah, the yeah people. let's tell them about oh, it. Yeah, yeah. For Love or Country, the Arturo Sandoval it's story well with done, Andy man. Garcia. Great, think, yeah, great think, film. Yeah, I think uh, HBO did a very serious job there. In your estimation, What's your best quality as a trumpeter? Me? Yeah. I think the heart I put in my thing, you know. It's not a, I, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't mention any kind of a skill or ability or technical ability or whatever, because that, that's, anybody can do it, but I, I believe what really made me identify with the instrument or, or do what I do with the instrument 
is uh, the amount of passion I put when I blow that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And let me tell you, there's nobody out I there who blows it like you do. No, I don't fool around. I <laughs> go for it, you know. <laughs> ah, with the, the seamless, flawless technique, the musicality, the lines are so lyrical. You, sir, tr and I don't... Genius is not a word I throw around. Virtuoso no, no, no. is not a word I throw around. But with you, virtuoso, <laughs> right yeah. there, Arturo. I don't like that much that word because, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 I want to be remembered as a music lover. What that guy was, he loved music. Yeah. <laughs> the economy bleeds music. That's it. Which one of these are you more connected to? Which one are you most connected to of all no, these? No, those, those guys there... It's like uh, your children. Yes. You know, if you're taking a picture with all your kids around, and somebody point any of them and say, who's your favorite? If you are intelligent dad, you're going to say, are you crazy? All of them, they're my favorite. You cannot point any of your kids. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all my kids, you know, for good or for bad or whatever. They're, they're, I take responsibility for those kids. <laughs> this has been a remarkable life for you, just a remarkable life. In your mind's eyes, Arturo, where do you see it going from here? That's not my way of thinking, you know, I've never been like that. I, I, what I have been trying to do all my life is do as good as, good as I can in that specific moment, today. Tomorrow is a brand new day, I don't know. You can make your plan, but God has a different plan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, now, I'm uh, still alive, I'm here, I'm trying to concentrate and be focused in what I'm doing with you and trying to make my English as good as I can because it's funny English, you know. That's the only one I have. Unfortunately, <laughs> I live in the wrong city to learn the language because in Miami, nobody speaks English, you know. <laughs> I try hard to learn and improve my language, but, you know, in Miami, everywhere you go, the people talk to you in Spanish. Yeah. And sometimes you see a guy which is, uh, you know, American, and you talk to them in English, and they reply to you in Spanish. <laughs> when you go and you listen to any of these, any of these, Every one of them, as I said, is a breath of fresh air. Every one of them different. You turn the corner on every single disc. And forthcoming in March, this tribute CD, I know, is that's, just going to... my dream. You're going to raise the bar. I, I not even can compare any of this with, with that record. Arturo Sandoval, thank you for doing this. You're very, very this welcome. This has been very a true welcome. pleasure. Very nice. Come here anytime. Thank you, man. Thank you. Backstage at the Wolf Den here at the Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. For Words and Music, I'm Lich. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.